Take a look at what we got in the shop today. Uh, buddy of mine got a deal on this truck. I'm just going to go ahead and say I'm a little bit jealous. This is a 2014 Ford F550 with a 6.7 crew cab. Less than 120, a little less than 120,000 on the odometer. Already got a ranch hand on the front of it. Uh, these side running boards made of forged steel like that. I don't know if somebody made these or if that's something mass produced. Uh, they obviously could use a, a spray bomb of paint on them, but those are... That, that's not flimsy crap uh, like a lot of them. But I, I think the truck had no bed on it when he got it or it didn't have the bed he wanted or I'm not sure. But this is a bed he got a deal on, this aluminum bed. Uh, and it says Keith's Truck Service on it. Uh, don't know where that is or whatever. But uh, so why is it here? Okay. Uh, he wants that fifth wheel pin in it. Um, he wants to haul a gooseneck with it. He's got that hitch right there. Uh, don't know what it come off of. Don't know what the bed come off of. Doesn't matter. Uh, what he wants me to do is put that connected to the frame where the door on the aluminum bed will close and it'll pull a gooseneck like he wants it to. I asked him if there was any preference or anything about the elevation of the of the ball for the gooseneck hitch. Um, he said as long as the top of that ball was below that plate so that that door would shut, then he's good with it. So to me, that's the first thing. The first thing I'm going to want to do is see where this bed currently is in relation to the frame and i'm if i have to you know he's got he's got the bed thrown on there and there's a couple brackets with two bolts in it uh there's a flat plate on each side let's take a look see there's a plate if you look at the bottom right there there's one bolt like that on each side and, and that's all it's holding the bed on and um where that plate is is pretty much in line with where that where that gooseneck hitch needs to be mounted to the frame so that plate could be incorporated into this anyways first thing i'm gonna do is get this elevation figured out uh it would not matter if if i needed to, uh, i talked to him yesterday about the elevation of the bed uh you know and we don't think it would matter if the bed went up a half inch or an inch or an inch and a half, uh, if, if that need be. But first thing's going to be getting the elevation figured out, and we'll go from there. So with the bed setting the way it is now, uh, from the top of the truck frame, to the elevation of the flatbeds, eight and a half inches. So that's worth taking note there. And I also uh, got this centered up in the hole and I made a mark on the frame. I made a, 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 paint, a white paint stick mark down there. That would show where fore and aft that the center of that gooseneck ball should be. I think I'm going to pull this bed off here and get that out of the way and then I'll figure out what we can do with that hitch.
what I can see from setting this on there, just taking the taking the gooseneck hitch and setting it on the frame right here, I can see that the elevation of the ball right now is about perfect. We're at, uh, I think, six and three quarters is what I got from the top of that ball to the top of the truck frame, which would put it an inch and a quarter underneath the lid of that bed, the plane of the top of the flatbed, and that would be ideal. Uh, oh, at first glance, it looks like, oh, we ought to just notch this out and set this down on the frame. But if you do that, you're going to hit this exhaust and you're going to make that go down. I don't want that to go down. I like it just the way it is. So what I'm thinking is that this part of the hitch right here, this center section, that currently has its bottom flush with the frame that's probably the only part of this i'm going to use and i think if i set it on top of a plate that's not too thick like probably a 3 8 by 12 flat bar going up 3 8 of an inch is not going to hurt us i think that would be ideal and that would also if welded to this box section would be quite strong probably stronger than the rig we got right here or at least as strong and the other thing about doing that is it's quite simple so i think that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna eliminate everything but this box uh i don't need that that either one of those on the ends we don't need this uh, could probably weld that damn pin in there. He's not going to be removing the pin. Um, and could probably put our 3 8 by 12 flat underneath of this box and weld it to the plates in that bed. So I'm probably going to take those off of that bed and we'll take a look at those and maybe even put them back on here uh, on the truck frame. <laughs> So I took the plates off the bed. I got them over here. I got this one marked drinker side. I got the other one marked captain side. I uh, bolted them up here. I've taken a measurement from the front. Everything's pretty symmetrical. Uh, these marks that I used a grinder to scribe a line that would show the bottom of that piece of aluminum and that gives me a way to line this up a little bit on the frame that way since there's only just that one bolt in the bottom it'll tilt so having that helps and then i was able to measure in between from right here to right here and got 34 inches so i need to cut a 3 8 by 12 flat bar 34 inches long got me a piece of flat bar cut i just used the torch off the super service truck and cut that uh, off the flat bar that I had in a Connex box and this one right here is going to need some cutting too I'll pull out the hose from the shop torch and uh, Cut these bolts and get this thing apart Huge benefit to have specialized tools for the stuff you do That's a scarfing tip Oxyacetylene scarfing tip makes it a lot easier to cut the head off a bolt or to gouge out a weld or to Cut one piece of steel against another piece of steel and only cut one and not the other. It's kind of like a washing tip. It's kind of not so much a piercing cut, more of a wide uh, washing the, the molten metal sort of a torch tip. and It's going to be great for cutting the heads off these bolts.
way this is made and the way I want to put this on my 3 8 by 12 plate, I'm going to have to cut a hole for this. So let's do that. Gonna want to put some more bolts in this now. Uh, I'm gonna try to drill four holes with the mag drill to give us two more bolts other than just that center bolt. It'll give us two more bolts in each side.
Well, we got our holes drilled. And the unexpected, there's always an unexpected issue. And the unexpected issue I ran into was in order to get my mag drill in here to drill some of these holes, I had to pull the wheels off and I couldn't get them off. Uh, my gun wouldn't break them loose. I tried a breaker bar with, with my foot jumping up and down on it. Breaker bar wouldn't break them loose. Evidently, these lug nuts have been on here for quite some time because I know the torque on my lug nuts on, on my trucks uh, is like 165, and my gun takes those off every time. Uh, I can't imagine these uh, being much more torque than that. But anyway, uh, I think it was a good thing that we got them off there. And what I ended up doing, my buddy owns this truck, a mechanic down the road. Um, and he wasn't far from here, and I got a hold of him. And he was able to run down with a gun that's more powerful than what I have. And he got them broke loose uh, here real quick. So we got all, I got everything mag drilled where there's three 5 8 bolts in each side of this hitch. And I'm confident with the hitch. So uh, we take a look here at what I did with the hitch. So, uh, I feel like those six, five, eight inch bolts, they're great eights, that's going to be good. Something I'm going to do that I decided to do, it's going to take a minute, but it's probably worth it. I'm going to take this back off so I can flip it over and weld the other side of that plate to the bracket. Uh, I don't want to leave that unwelded as a place for cracks to start, so... I'm going to take a minute, take it off there, weld it up, put it back on. Got the hitch put back on, tightened all the, tightened all the bolts up, and uh, I want to put that bed back on here and see how this works. So let's get into it.
truck bed's back on. I hooked up the fuel filler neck and the filler for the def. And uh, the thing needs some more mounts. It needs a bracket made for the back and the front. But that's phase two. Uh, as far as phase one, we're looking good. I think she's ready to pull. Ready to pull a gooseneck trailer. So I'm not sure what's next for this. I don't know. Uh, I believe he's going to want me to go ahead and make mounts and, and whatnot, but uh, I'm at a stopping point here this evening. It's, it's late this evening. Uh, I'm at a stopping point where I'm going to be working with this fella in the morning. We're going to be working on a rig up the road here, and I'll tell him what I got what I got done and see what else he wants me to do on it. But we're going to hold up on it for now because uh, it's time to stop and get a shower and get something to eat. So I talked to my buddy Ron about his truck. Uh, I was up at the shop where he worked yesterday working on a rig, a uh, service rig, and I talked to him about what else he wanted to do on the truck and all he wanted me to do was put a set of mounts on the front of the bed so that it uh, wouldn't be mounted only there where the where the gooseneck hitch is. So I've done that and I used a set of mounts that uh, he had. Must have come with the bed or something he took off the bed. Don't know. Uh, but I was able to use them, and all I really did was uh, use the mag drill to put the right, put the hole in the frame on each side where it goes. We can take a look at that real quick. It's not a big deal. It's a nice aluminum mount though that he had, and what's what's really nice is that that T formation of it right there puts it so that there's something under that frame. Uh, you know, if that, if, uh, if that uh, bed had a lot of weight on it, it wouldn't just be on the sheer strength of those bolts, which the bolts would be fine. Um, if you had a lot of weight on the bed and it was squishing down that didn't have something solid to end up resting down on, you know, obviously what it would do is it would make the hole in that aluminum oval. So with that block in between the, the two frames, the bed frame and the truck frame, obviously you're going to have something that uh, sets down solid. I also noticed further back here, there's not much of a gap uh, between the bed frame and the rivets on top that are, that are uh, holding the double frame. Uh, these 550s got this frame brace where there's a, a double frame. Might want to look at that real quick. See how they, this is the end of the double frame on the 550s. They have this, this brace. Uh, the, and this is where it stops. And then see right there, you've only got just, you know, barely a 16th of an inch between the bed frame and those rivets. So if there was weight, you, you, you know, you wouldn't have to worry about that going down very far. And of course, back here where our mount's at, I've got a piece that 3 three eighths by 12 plate is in between there. But Ron said <clears throat> he's thinking of building a bumper in the back. And if he builds a bumper and maybe incorporates a, some sort of a Reese type trailer hitch into that or something, uh, he'd obviously be dealing with the mounts on it when he did that. So, uh, he didn't think there was any point in me doing anything more than just putting those front mounts on. So, we'll take a look at it.
This truck's a gem, I think. Uh, yeah, 14 model F550 67 ranch hand on the front of it, aluminum bed, less than 120 thou on her. Nice truck. I can't find a damn thing wrong with it. Look at these seats. And even with the miles that are on it, I mean, this thing. Sandy Hooser, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching.